Bangkok Chit Chat Spotlight. Welcome back to Bangkok Chit Chat with Andrew and Andy. And in the studio today, we've got Owen O'Kelly, who's the manager of Scruffy Murphy's Pub here in Bangkok. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Uh, before we get into uh, Scruffy's, uh, a little bit about your background. Yeah, well, based straight from school into the food and beverage. So uh, I was hotel trained back in Dublin, then went to the States, spent about 10 years in the US. Yeah, at hotels? In hotels for about four or five years with. Then we went into the the Irish pub business over there. So we opened up about maybe 12, I think it was 12, 13 Irish bars throughout the States. Yeah. Not in the main areas, not like your Chicago or New York or San Francisco, mainly like West Virginia, maybe following the army and the Navy oh, right. around. I was going to so, say why, you didn't go yeah. where all the people live. No, but we went to like just different areas, but following the army, normally at their bases, because they, they do like to have a bit of R&R &R afterwards. And, uh, it was very popular, proved a success for that. Yeah. And so that was interesting times over there. It was a good time. But then everything kind of went right. Decisions, decisions. Do I stay in the States for the rest of my life? Do I go yeah. home and try it out again? You know, because like I left when I was about 20 or so. And me, yeah, so it's kind of, okay, I better go home and just see. And if I don't like it, I'll come back again or whatever. That was the open choice I left myself. Yeah, good. good. And so we went back and uh, we bought a pub down in County Limerick, West Limerick. Just outside of Dare, you might all know Dare with the uh, Dare Manor and everything else. One of the most world class hotels in the world. Okay, there you go, no, guys. I know. No. Yeah. <laughs> what you do now? You do now. <laughs> so we were we bought the pub there. It was actually kind of a rundown at the time. So we invested a few quid into it. But was it was like an old pub anyway? Very old pub. Very old pub. Yeah. Uh, it was a grocery and a bar actually. You know, oh. really old types. You know. Yeah. Oh, so that's on the floor. Pardon me? Sawdust Not on the quite, floor. very close. Going out, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The spit bucket in the corner kind of thing, you know? So, <laughs> but it was, uh, you could see that it was open for development. It was ready to go. And it was at a crossroads as well. So it was Neville's Cross. But that, we got that moving uh, within two or three years. It got up and going. And it was flying. A lot of food. But at the same time, it, you know, it's very near the race courses, very near tourist areas. It was... It was yeah, traffic. Yeah, 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 traffic. Yeah. But of course, like everything, you know, some things do this and do that and as the years came on you know the no smoking and drink driving was mm. hard and forced mm -hmm. so things changed but yeah so it's kind of that changed over the years but you know the different things of course and the Celtic Celtic Tiger was there when I just came in it was just building up to start so the there's time. a lot of money around at that time yeah? absolutely plenty of it yeah yeah and the banks were willing to give it out as well so right. it helped everybody you know especially small businesses so yeah no it was an exciting time back in Ireland back then do you, do you have like a violin player on the Friday night? Wednesday nights. Oh, Wednesday nights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wednesday nights. Uh, always good, but it's traditional. Yeah. 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 Well, we used to get all the hotels, the Dunraven Arms and what have you. They still send all their customers up to us. So, yeah, it was very good. Every bit helps, you know. So, yeah, if we could make it any more Irish, we'd put straw in and everything else, you know. <laughs> so that didn't go on forever. So. No, no. Yeah, that was kind of, well, I mean, in the meantime, that, in the meantime, I got involved over in Thailand. And that's where, how I ended up here, basically. Um, there was a couple of relatives that were involved in building a condo hotel down in Pate at the time. And the opening came for doing a bar inside. So I came over and had a look. That was around 2005-ish. Came over and had a look and, uh, yeah, I liked what I saw. Uh, first time in Thailand and everything else, but it was basically the business and everything. it looked good. So I got involved in that, and we opened O'Gara's in 2006, I think it was, uh, with Tara Court, and uh, it was very good. It was very, you know, it, it, now that's what, another question, like, is, you know, Patea, is it the same as it is now? No, totally different. Well, there wasn't, a, is it fair to say that there wasn't as much competition in, 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 in pub, proper pub? Well, we were, no, yeah, but, but we were, totally, we were away from Patea, we were on Practimac Hill. So it's yeah, like yeah. it's like the the border between Jumpy like and suburb sort of thing. Yeah. Exactly, as such. Now it's developed hugely now, yeah. but we were probably one of the first properties on that hill yeah. back then. And uh, now you couldn't get a square meter there. So things have changed that way. But at the same time, the your customer has totally changed. Disposable income. Yeah, changed. absolutely. Well, see, two thousand six, two thousand seven, even two thousand eight, coming up to two thousand nine, we had a load of Europeans and Nordics, and you know. Right. Everybody coming in, and there was plenty of cash. Right. After that, that just totally changed. And I never recovered from that. 
after that we've got more obviously the Chinese and the Russians there but uh, and they spend it in a different way but they don't go to your local pubs right like the social and the people who still want to go to pubs are more attracted by happy hours uh, three for two, uh, two, three for two. Well, you're, 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 I'm just trying to egg these people on. You know, we need it. You know, yeah. Well, absolutely. Give up, will you? Well, Patea is totally different than back to Bangkok. You know, yes. like when I first came to Bangkok, then I went home for a while. Obviously, with the whole tiger collapsing and all that. Back at home, I went back to try and see if we could do something with the bars there, but things were just gone too far. So I decided. Let's move back to Thailand. It was, you know, we've got everything here. No regrets. Great people, no, none whatsoever. Uh, great so, weather, great people, great food. You know, it's it's lovely. And so it's, after Patia, where where? Well, I went back and then I oh came yeah, back. He went but there, yeah, yeah, well, then one of the developers actually bought the pub. So in hindsight, I'd love to have kept it, but say it'll be uh, that didn't happen. But uh, yeah, well, I went back for a while. Then I came back. And I said, right, but we'll do. I got into a bit of real estate, bit of this, bit of that. And I uh, eventually got back into the bar game out of pure, I don't know whether you call it luck or, <laughs> or just happened to be in the right place or the wrong place at the right time. Yeah. And uh, having a beer, and next minute I knew I was working in uh, the Dubliner. Yeah, that does bring back memories that Dubliner. By Washington Square, right? Uh, no, there was the one oh. after it, actually, the new one in th Site 33. All right, one. Yes. Yeah. All right, yes. So yeah. it was, you know, I had 18 rooms there and everything else. So uh, it was exciting, it was different. Uh, yeah, it was an episode that I would prefer. You know, that maybe I've skipped it, but anyway, that's yeah. the life as you go on. Yeah. So, yeah, so it, that's been, you know, for the last few years, it's been quite exciting. Mm -hmm. Different things happening. Mm -hmm. uh, traveled around around, see the rest of Southeast Asia, see what's happening. Um, but the magnet always brought me back to Bangkok. It was always has that effect? It so really a, a lot of people do leave and then they, they come back, or at least to, to, to visit. Yeah, uh, they've lived here for me five, ten years. And for some reason, come back. it's yeah, always happening. Back. There's a little buzz about it. There's a magnetic. I know people can give out about this and that, but for me, the highs are still way ahead. Yeah, the lows. You know yeah. what I mean? So uh, that's why I'm here for fifty years. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it, it, is, it is good. And you get settled in it, and people yeah. are lovely. You know, so it's. And I think also now that with a lot of people that were transient moving away, you get, and maybe because because we're getting older. Uh, People are, are are staying longer. They're not looking to leave. They're looking at retiring here. Yes. They, they treat it as a home. Whereas before, when I was younger, you'd find that you know, people come in, they're, they're there for a business for three years, and they're gone. Mm. So you make all these close relationships. Well, as you get older, people become more permanent. But depending on what you get involved in here, too. Some people yeah. are coming in with corporate groups. Yes. And they are on the contract, say, for two years or whatever. And then they go, okay. And they go home, and they think, you know what? Let's try something else back there, or they look for another contract back because there. they yeah. feel comfortable. Because they feel so comfortable yeah. there, and I've seen that many times. And especially, you know, sometimes it's and you see obviously a lot more men coming back for some reason. Oh, that yeah, if yeah. women get a contract over there, they're more likely okay, they do their two three years and then they go home again. Mm -hmm. So, but I think that's more a relationship and seeing marriage down the road, or whatever. But right? you'll see a lot of that in the pub, though. You, you know, having people coming in, going back. You have, uh, I have friends who go back to UK for mm -hmm. six months, come back yeah, for three months. Yeah, uh, yeah. But it's a, it's a regular thing. Oh, absolutely. Are yeah. you seeing there's more permanent people, uh, you know, people staying in a permanent Looking basis? Stay, yes. Yes. Than, than before. Yeah. Yes, I would think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Because you, you, you took over, uh, you bought Queen Vic, not you, but the, right, the, group, the group. Correct, yes. Bought Queen Vic, uh, and I used to go there, uh, and I, I must admit, I did like it, but it was never vibrant let's say mm -hmm. um and uh you you took it over and you've changed it to a, a place where people really want to go it's a meeting place and it, the one thing i always liked uh, about it was for queen Vic, what you retained was you have these booth areas mm -hmm. yeah now i'm not sure business wise if you're really busy whether that's a, a valid statement to keep it or not but what i what i find is if i'm meeting somebody and we're on a casual basis me business chit chat or whatever it is right. Uh, don't we chit chat? Let's chit chat. Well, we did for business on chit chat. We did sit there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we did. We discussed there. Yeah, uh, and there was some private booth areas, so it's it's a very comfortable place to take people for you know business meeting in, yes. in a more casual atmosphere. And I was really very glad you actually kept that. Yeah, that was that. I thought that was one of the advantages of being fixed. No, it does work. It's comfy. Yes, you know, it's comfy. I mean, and you do actually have you your private eat. TV there. You, yeah. you can do your own thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's basically you have you know your own private section in an area. It's like going back to the old. Uh, the Irish cubby holes, you know, right in the bars. That you uh, and the snugs, we used to yeah, 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 yeah. Snugs. And they used to be in the corner, and you, you know, you open, slide the door open, and yeah. three pints, yeah, 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 and you yeah, close yeah. it again, and off you go. Yeah, private area again. So, something like that. So, uh, this all these your mindset on what a pub should be 
which is very evident, I think we can safely say the scruff is, is success. So is it what's in you that has made it a success? Oh, well, it's, it's a lot more than me as well. It's, it's, it's a lot to do with the group, the support we have. Yeah. Um, especially Don, our operations guy, he's been wonderful with the help of getting together. Yeah. Like, you know, when I do ask for something, I don't know, sometimes I don't get it, but I normally do straight away, you know, so it's, you know, for the help and for assistance. And that's what it took. It took we didn't do anything structural there. Maybe with the patio, we cleaned it up a lot yeah. and covered the kitchen. But inside, it was a bit of TLC, a bit of paint, and some lighting. And, and you put a pool table upstairs. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. It's upstairs. upstairs. Yeah. It's upstairs, yeah. Oh, that's a grand size up there. Like, we do a lot of meetings up there as well. Yes. And we have the darts and the pool. So we're both in both leagues as well with the, with the darts okay. and the pool. Yeah. Most so, important for a pub to be in leagues. 100%. You know what I mean? It brings people that don't even know you were existed yeah. prior. Yes. You know what I mean? So they say, oh, wow. And then you give them a chance to... Here, try our food. Wow, that's good. So, you know, it's all plus, plus, plus. But part of that success, then, you, you attribute to being part of a group because... Uh, it helps. It definitely helps. It would be a lot tougher if you're on your own. Mm. Um, like if you're or a partnership or whichever trying to do the mm. same thing. Yeah. Um, we have a lot of resources at our hand, whether it be marketing, you know, simple things, anything. Mm. So, little things like that always work. Um, but then again, you have... You asked earlier, what was my feeling of a pub? Yeah. Pub is like my living room. Yes. The way I want it to be. It's a bit of a local. So, exactly. So when they people open the door, they want to feel welcome. Yeah. So, if, you know, if staff are there, they're smiling, they're saying hello, how are you? Yeah. Being attentive, but not over attentive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, you say hello, but you don't sit down and have a 20 minutes conversation no. with them. Sure. <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you know what? There is nothing worse than going to a local. And I had one a few years ago, and I won't go into it because I don't want to offend anybody. But this landlord would sit down at my table, and all I wanted to do was be on my own, yes, you know, and yes. look at the phone or do yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. And he just sat, and he was only being super friendly. Yeah, absolutely. And so I had to be super. I couldn't say, look, do you, could you? How can you say to someone, do you mind leaving the table? I want to be on my own. Yeah, yeah. You know, it would offend the guy. Right. But you've got to find the well, right compromise of being time. friendly and you can say yeah. hello anytime. Yeah. Hello, how are you? That's only polite. Everything you say hello right. and you know straight away. If you're long enough in it, you know straight away that, okay, he's happy. Yeah. But I think it's also... Yeah. And you look at people's eyes. You tell everything from somebody's eyes and mm. they walk in the door where they're happy, angry, hungry, thirsty, mm. whatever. Spoken like a real landlord. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's... Well, well, it's, also, it's what you are, you're basically a psychologist in many ways. You, you hear all the, the moans and moans. They say at home, you're like a parish priest. You, yeah. you listen to everybody. It's confessions. You listen to them all, but you can't say anything about it. Yes. Well, there, there, yeah. there is that thing about the so, barman is your, your, is your priest. Right? Absolutely. That's the difference between a local yeah. pub and a, a, a pub which has got, let's say, Hard Rock Cafe. Mm -hmm. You would treat that as a, you'd go there for a pub or an occasion. Yeah? I mean, but whereas you, you, you go to Scruffy's you go home. on a Friday night. Well, the big thing yeah. I find in, in Thailand, Bangkok, whichever, um, is that you walk into a bar. A lot of bars, they don't want you sitting at the counter. They don't cause, because, because they don't have the staff behind the counter to communicate. Right. With the customers. Yes. I've been very fortunate in Scruffy's over there, you know, that I have one or two really good guys behind Alex. Excellent. Alex yeah. being one. Yeah. He's top class. And he talks you away. And yeah. So we're bringing people to the counter. Like yeah. you would come into us, as you know, that you will see the counter full. Yeah. Because there's interaction going on. Yeah. You can go oh, to yeah. other bars. And, you know, I mean, a good yeah. bar barman is a ring, uh, a circus, what's it ringmaster. Yeah. And he's... He's like yeah, orchestrating he's everything our, going on. Like our head baritone there, like he's at least, and he's, he's wonderful. You know, if you're Australian, he's speaking an Australian accent even. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. He speaks Japanese. He's learning Japanese since he's joined us. He's just been wonderful. But that's that interaction. That's the, the, so know. these are all parts of making, I mean, the next question is, how do you make a pub work? Well, I think you've well, more or less answered it. We know. It's, it's, a, it's a mixture of things. It's not just good food, but it has to be good food. Good food, consistency. Yeah. You know, um, fresh beer. Yeah. You know, uh, it's service with a smile. Yeah. You know, you have to be, you have to have that TLC mark. Yeah. You have to have that caring. People yeah. know if you're, don't care. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh no, it's yeah, pretty obvious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also, what you've got is that you now have the largest range of Irish whiskies. Correct. Again, we just won the global awards for that. Yeah, for this uh, for this area. Well, it's quite a large area, Southeast Asia, and brings in Dubai and all that as well. So it's. Yeah, we've got the largest collection of Irish whiskey. And Didn't you get manager actually, of the year? No, no. Not this year, next year. <laughs> okay, I got nominated, okay, I got nominated, okay, I got nominated. Owen O'Kelly, Owen O'Kelly, Scruffy Murphy's. 
So, so trade, you know, like staff, I mean, I, I, I mm-hmm. speak to different people at restaurants and things like that. The biggest problem I've got is finding staff. Yes. Also, with English ability. Now, mm-hmm. then you turn around and say, well, maybe you can take on Filipino, then you've got all the work permit issues and things like that. Yeah. But do you find it difficult to find Thai staff and keep them? Yes. Because they will jump for five hundred baht. Yeah? Yes, um, yes, and that's more. No, that's and that's the that's when your personality comes in, you know, right. as such. And you do want to have staff, and you, you want to train. You know, especially when you're opening a new bar. When you're a new bar, you're basically okay. It wasn't a new bar, but we and we inherited some staff. Don't get me wrong, and they were very good, but we just didn't gel, shall we right. say. Uh-huh. So some of them moved on, say to be. So then we have to bring in new staff, whether it's the kitchen or the front of office, you know, front the restaurant, what have you. And you have to teach them and guide them and put their arm over, put your arm over them and just you know show coach, them that, that we're all yeah. coach them. I'd rather have somebody. Sometimes it's better to have somebody with no experience in the restaurant game but are willing to learn. Yes, but That's if they like somebody. you, if they like you and they're comfortable, mm-hmm. then they're not going to be like some might say. Well, I'll get trained. I yeah. know how to do things. And yeah. bye. Yeah, yeah. So they feel more. Uh, they have respect for you and 100%. they feel com- comfortable. Think, so and that, that goes back to, you know, for living in Thailand, uh, as both of you have for quite a while, that's what respect comes from. Yes. And then, you know, and the Thais are very respectful in that manner. And, you know, like with your seniors and your ladies and everything else, they're very respectful. So it's just automatic that if you do that to them, they'll do that to you. Mm. They will respect mm. you. So, so I have heard of situations where restaurants, so someone uh, who doesn't know how to cook and they employ all the people to do all the cooking, mm-hmm. etc., uh, they just know how to taste something, and that's really it. Next thing you know, their chef is holding them to ransom, and the, the whole kitchen leaves yeah. en masse because it's like a little. So I football union. manager. Well, there you go again. We're going back to what is the you know the, the benefits of being part of a group. Mm-hmm. Right. But also, um, Don and I were both in the originated back in the food side of things. Okay. So I did the chefing back before in the states and back in Ireland as well. So if the kitchen was open, leave. No problem. You All can go and do it yourself. Like they'll never hold this ransom. You know what I mean? So that's good. Yeah. That's the that's so that's a benefit. Yeah, absolutely. Hang on a second. Just on on that food side, the, the group. How many pubs in the group? Well, we've got the Kiwi, the Aussie, um, Scruffies. We just after thinking over Craft Bar Whiskers, okay. on site twenty three. Also, we then have Rosanna's Restaurant. Oh. And then we have actually Birds now have just come on board as well. I don't think if you know the Birds no. Registry, very, very good. They've won in the Commons at the moment. Okay. And they went out and see them, but we're going to probably bring that towards craft as well. Right. And, so, uh, what determines what menu goes where? I mean, obviously, some of those outlets are Everywhere is separate. Everywhere is separate. Well, All individual profit well. centers. Yeah. Absolutely. Everybody's separate. Everybody. Now, we do support each other. If I run out of keg of Guinness tomorrow, I can look at you go, hey That's Kiwi, how you One doing? of the advantages yeah. of being yeah, in so, a group. Absolutely, yeah. we all yeah. work together in that yeah. and we all work together for promotion, to promote each yeah. each each premises. So with the the question being, what was your question, sorry? <laughs> sorry I forgot yeah. it now. Um, Not to do with food. food oh, food. the food menus, do yeah, uh, is a menu uh, specific to a pub, why? Well, we try, well, obviously with the Aussie, we keep it Aussie team. Yeah, okay. Irish, Irish team, Kiwi, bit more Kiwi team. Um, Rosanna's obviously you're Italian, what have you? Very, very nice restaurant down there. Um, so yeah, we go with the teams as such, but we also bring a bit of everywhere in. You know, you have to bring your Thai yeah. into it and your Asian mix mm-hmm. into it. Um, so that's what we try to do also. So your customer base, since you're responsible for scruffy, so mm-hmm. the customer base is a percentage of what nationality would you say? Wow, yeah, it's so much varied, and then it's with you know. Some people say there's no high season, no season in Bangkok, but there is, there mm-hmm. is. So with the high season there, we're still in it. Um, we get a lot of tourists from, I'm finding a lot from Europe, actually a lot more than there was from before. Europe? They're starting a bit more. And we're, or else we're getting transients. They're stopping off in Bangkok on the way to Australia, yeah. for instance. So now that's our, ex, that's not our expat, that's our tourist side of things. They're very, very, you know, Germans, Nordics again, and the Irish. Irish pop up out of oh, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, they yeah. really do. Um, but then our expat customer base would be a lot of Japanese, um, Thai, very much so also. And Thai, then, Thai locals, obviously. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And then your your expats, obviously, um, which vary again from teachers to executives to, you know, everybody around, as you know yourself, you've been here. So so if you could, all right, picture when you were in Padia, mm-hmm. in the bar, in mm-hmm. the pub, and now. What's the major difference between then and now? Two major different cities. 
shall we say, uh, to start with. But definitely back then, there was a lot more free cash, if you know what I mean. There was a lot yeah. more Europeans coming over. Like, Patea was your destination, R&R, &R, whichever. Mm -hmm. And they had cash to spend, and they were spending it. They were here for two weeks, one week, or a month. They were spending it. Whereas now, you see people are on a budget. People are looking at, okay, yeah, we can do that. Okay, we'll only spend, because they find Bangkok expensive. Mm -hmm. Bangkok is, uh, oh, I, I, I hear it every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Same as Ireland, the price of you know, the Guinness, it's important. And that's what it's put, it, there's a tax on it here. Mm -hmm. That's what they do, everything is on, you know. And so yeah. to get that, and I have to re re remind people that you are in the middle of Bangkok. You know, yes. You're in the Sukhumvit mm -hmm. area of Bangkok. One of the top what, five, six cities yeah. in well, the, the rate, world. Yeah, the rates are high. And Everything's yeah. high. So, you know, you have to remember, yeah, well, it's just like, like London, it's just like Dublin, it's just like New York. Absolutely it is. But, well, yeah. that's, that, that's <laughs> yeah, why it's 14 million people one, here also. One, one of know. the big yeah. reasons between then and now, though, I would have said, is that people's expectations, they expect more now. Well, they expect more. I mean, back then, there wasn't much to compare anything well, with. I think it's people still think Thailand being a poor country. Yeah, it's, know, it's cheap to be here. Some things are. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, you go to, you obviously, if you go two hours outside Bangkok, it's totally different <laughs> again, you know. You go down south, you go up north, you know, mm -hmm. beautiful areas, and uh, it's a wonderful country. And it's a lot cheaper. Mm -hmm. But Bangkok is Bangkok. Yeah. You know, it's got it's a major hub in Southeast Asia. But then people go, wow, look at that, they have an underground. Oh, <laughs> wow, they have a sky train. They too. invented, they got the mm -hmm. wheel. You know, wow. so you know, they're actually not the kind of, well, we weren't expecting this. We were expecting them to be on bicycles or stuff. You know what I mean? So there is that element of for newcomers. And, you know, young guys or whatever, or even middle-aged folks, you know, that are coming there go, wow. What kind of things uh, would you say that, of all the moans and groans you get from people, what is the common moan, moan and groan they have? Being a public and hearing all the moans and groans. Moans and groans, wow. Well, lately it's Bangkok? the air. Anyway. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Traffic. Right. You know, getting around. Um, Taxis has come up a few times. Many times. So yeah. we won't go there, but anyway, we all have well, issues with them. I that's think. a topic, as we keep saying, yeah, on these shows yeah, yeah. for another day, which we will get around to doing. But then I would say, I will say, there's a lot more pluses than negatives. Absolutely. You know, um, the people have been very nice. Yes, you'll always hear this one thing about negative, but more. But you hear more. that back in your own country, everyone is moaning and whinging as well. Yeah, a lot more. Yeah, a lot more. We've got a couple know. more questions. Um, <laughs> where do you see the pub business going in Bangkok? Well, uh, in Thailand, but in Thailand, yeah. well, as we're in Bangkok, well, it's getting a lot diff more difficult to have a regular expat pub as such. Now you can go and you can spend a lot of money on your entertainment bars as such, as I call mm. them. But to have your regular pub to come in, the rents are going so much higher. Uh, and like you said, you want to keep the prices. Of at a decent yeah. Yeah. rate. Yeah. A lot of ours are seem to be moving out a bit more. Right. Like say whether it's out towards the airport, you know, where expats are living more in Bank of P or wherever, you know. Mm -hmm. So depends even on this, you know, that area. There's, yeah, there's, there's a lot of few bars out there. Bars and, and, yeah, so they are mm -hmm. moving out of their central area, but then again, to have a bar successful and keep the rents down, you have to have footfall. Yes. And people with budgets that can spend. You know what I mean? So if you're going out to a certain area those people that are living there are on a budget. Yeah. So your price, so it's all relative to so, what so you have around you. to a location, I mean, you're based, you can get down to a soak, over mm -hmm. a soak. You don't need to walk through Cowboy. You can walk through the, through the precinct to yeah, avoid yeah. all that. <laughs> and you're in the middle, you've got the MRT and BTS right there. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's an from the, ideal location. From the Do you think the, the fact that you're an Irish bar is actually because of that Irish it, brand? Look, it's not, it helps. Benefit. But I go, like, you know, we've all travelled and we all try our, you know, oh, an Irish pub. And as an Irish, you know, the last place you should, I should be going is to an Irish pub to say, you know, few managers of Irish people that run an but Irish the thing pub. is, there's so, like, there's, there's only one Irish pub in Bangkok and that's Scruffy Murphy's. Mm. Oh, no, there's not. There's one, two, three, four, five. I mm. said, yeah, no, no, no. Irish pub, you said. There's only one. I there you go. Oh, I'm right. going to get really cool for that, but it's, 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 it's true. We're Irish old, Irish run. Yes. Yes. Finishing yeah. up, one Good. final question. Where do you see yourself in 10 years from now? Wow, ask me tomorrow. Ask me next year, I should say. You know? Well, ask me in 10 years. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Where am I going to go? Yeah, I'm not sure. Right. We'll see. Oh, and it's been a pleasure. It's been really interesting, and Thank thanks you, for Andy. coming on the show. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks very much. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Well, there we go. Hope you enjoyed that. And uh, just keep it here on Bangkok Chit Chat. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share all the details at the bottom of your screen. And we'll see you next time.
And I was looking at the clock, not the camera, for all that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm obsessed by that bloody clock. I'm going to switch it off. Yeah. No, you're not. No, no.